Craig, it's always good to see you, my friend. The audience watching, it's always good to see you too, even though it's not really a back and forth thing, is it? But you do message us enough, and we do appreciate it. So keep watching, keep tuning in. We love you, Craig. Let's talk about this technology, all because right. I know it's important to Akuma. I know it's important to the audience to understand just all the multitasking ability that a machine like this can give someone watching. Right, so with multitasking, you're mixing in turning and milling. Natively, this machine is a lathe. We call it a lathe. I'm a lathe AE. That's why I'm in front of this. But we add a milling spindle into the machine. This gives you more than what your live tools would on a lathe. It gives you a true milling spindle. It's a lot more bulky. We have 16 horsepower up there that we can mill with, 12,000 RPM. And when you go to run large cutters and insert cutters, it gives you that ability to push them like you would on your typical 40 tape or vertical mill. Yeah, you know, my job is never to put down other machines, but if we're gonna make a comparison between a turret, a standard turret that everyone knows so well, and then switching over to something like this, we typically have, what, about 12 stations in a turret, sometimes yep. a little more, give or take, depending, but this has a tool changer in it as well, which allows yep. for multiple operations. Can we talk a little bit about that, that flexibility also? So, there's 40 tools or 60 tools on this particular model. We have other multitasking machines where you can go up into the hundreds of tools. Woo! Those tools can either be turning tools or milling tools, multitasking. So they're all a Capto C6 connection. We either hold the tool stationary and turn with it, or we turn it on like a milling spindle and run it like you would end mills, drills, things like that. So I can only imagine, you know, as you talk, my mind gets creative because I'm always going into what's the next question I want to ask for the audience. Right. But I can only imagine how many operations are being combined or how many different machines might have to be utilized to do what you're doing in this machine on a regular basis? Yeah, people usually will step from having a lathe and a mill into a turret lathe with live tooling. They'll start running tools in there and realize right away that it is more productive, but there's limitations. They're running the tool slower than they were on the mill. Or as soon as you have a feature that has an angle to it that is not you know, straight on the face, straight in the side of the part, you still have to go put it into a mill and make those features. The other limitation you run into is what you said about turret stations. You either have 12 or 16, something like that, and you need to bring it into a machine like this. So this would be that next step up. This gives you either three plus two machining ability or true five axis machining ability on both sides. So we've even had at this show actually somebody that is running two five axis mills a little bit bigger machine than this, they want to come in here and see their part being made over here, transfer over and do five axis work over here, but it's a mill part. It, 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 the technology these days is so fascinating to me to know how much we can do in one machine. Now, something I want to talk about, because you said three plus two or true five axis, and obviously this head on the inside rotates to work on both sides. Sometimes the conversation comes up from the audience where they'll say, well, are we losing any rigidity? Are we losing any accuracy? Are we losing any torque and horsepower? But all of those things remain in this small size looking head as well, right? Yes, uh, Akuma build philosophy is we never put too powerful of a spindle on a bed. So you can, this is a 20 horsepower version. You can get 30 over here. We do not offer more than 15 horsepower over here because the way this um, W axis is what we call it comes over to pick off, there is not the rigidity to put a 30 horsepower spindle over there. So you're not going to ever run into an issue where you're overpowering your cut and you have a quality loss there, right? The milling spindle, 16 horsepower. This machine is capable of using all 16 horsepower. You can run the spindle out where it needs to run and you don't have to back off for that. So. Craig, I am so glad you said yes to joining me on camera today. Yeah. It's things like that that are so important to recognize for the audience. And again, I just want to say we're talking about milling right now. We're talking about the horsepower, but turning is just as normal because it is a natural turning yeah. machine. Just all the milling capabilities are there. So can we talk a little bit about the part you're making today? Yeah, so the most of the weight that is removed on this part is a turn or all turn features. The hole's drilled out, it's bored out, turn the OD out here to cut this spear on the outside. All of that is the majority of the weight removed. I think it takes about six minutes to do that. The whole entire part though, is 20 minutes. All the milling is where we get in the deburring. That's all the delicate work to make it a real finished part. This is something you'd put in a bin. Mm -hmm. You're done with it. You know, you might need to wipe it off. It's not 
the, it's not the kind of part where you're going to come in and um, have a, a person still have to handle every single piece. That's the flexibility you get with being able to tilt the head. Some of those features that we're putting on there, you have to be in an angle to reach around something. That's usually where you put the human in. They can use small tools. They can get into crevices. Being able to rotate the milling head around lets us do that with ball end mills. All right, Craig, now that you've answered almost all of my questions and probably the audience's questions as, as well, but if we haven't, leave it in the comments, give us a shout, Craig will be able to answer everything for you. But the last thing I want to ask you is the automation side of things. So we've talked about front side, back side, pretty much this is going to be a little wet, but maybe go into a box at some point, right? Yep. Can we hook up a cobot robot situation, maybe move it over to some sort of CMM measuring and quite literally take it from raw blank into measuring into a box and ship it out the door? Yes, on, on this machine here we can interface with a lot of the robots that come off the shelf, put an auto door on it, but we also have a solution where there's a robot built into the firewall on the machine and it has an auto door, a stocker that comes in right here. The robot parks up out of the way, you push a stocker out of the way, you can run it like a normal machine manually loaded during the day or when you're proving your parts out, you slide the stocker in, when you go home you let it run the automated job. So. And we're not afraid to interface with uh, anybody's robots, Fanuc, ABBs, you know. You know, sometimes things sound too good to be true, but they actually are just good and true. And with that being said, I don't even think there's anything else for me to say, Craig. All right. You are amazing. I'm done with this conversation. Yeah, good Thank work you with so you. much yeah. for your time. You are amazing as well, but I got to get out of here. What an interview by Craig. Wow, that was amazing.